Well, students, in the last class, we have introduced matrix norms and we have also given some examples. There's one example of matrix norms which is of interest to us because it satisfies certain properties which are crucially used in our error analysis for iterative methods for linear systems. In this class, we will introduce this particular type of norms called subordinate matrix norms. These are the matrix norms subordinate to a vector norm. Means you give me a vector norm. From there, I will generate a matrix norm using a certain procedure. What is that procedure? Well, let us define it. As I told, we are given a vector norm on Rn. Now we have to generate a matrix norm with the help of that vector norm. How are we going to do? Well, you just define that norm as supremum of the set of all vector norm taken over these vectors. That is, you give me a vector in Rn, I will find A of x and then take the norm of it. On which vectors I will take, I will take on unit vectors. That is the condition. So, for every matrix A you give, I will find a bag of numbers a x where all these x are unit vectors and then I will take the vector norm of them and collect this. So this is the set of all real numbers now. In fact, non-negative real numbers. Now you take the supremum of that. So that is what we will define as our matrix norm. You can check again, go back to your uh, definition of matrix norm and check that all the conditions we listed for matrix norm will be satisfied by this function. And hence, it will be a matrix norm. And that matrix norm is generated using the given vector norm. And that is called the matrix norm subordinate to that vector norm from where we have generated all these numbers and then took the supremum. I hope the definition is clear. Let us prove this important lemma for any A in MN of R. It means the set of all N cross N matrices with real entries and a given vector norm to us, then you can see that the matrix norm subordinate to that vector norm can also be defined using this formula. What is that? It is nothing but supremum of norm of Ax such that divided by norm of x such that the vector x is not a zero vector, right? You can replace supremum by maximum here for obvious reasons, which I will leave it to you to think, recall that subordinate norm is actually defined as supremum over all norm Ax such that x is the unit vector and of course they are in Rn. So everywhere we should keep in mind that these vectors are in Rn. That can also be written like this. That is what the lemma says. Often this formula is more handy to use. Therefore, we sometimes prefer this expression than what is given as the definition. That is why we state it as a lemma. Now, how to prove this lemma? Let us see. For any given vector z in Rn, which is not a zero vector, you can always write x like this and observe that x is a unit vector, right? That's all. Once you understand this, then the rest of the proof is very easy. Now you recall this is your definition of subordinate matrix norm. And that can be now written as like this, right? Because x is written like this, you just substitute x by 
this expression, then this can also be written like this. Now, A is a linear map and norm Z is a real number. Therefore, it comes out of A and further it can come out of the norm also. Remember, it will come as modulus of that scalar, but anyway, it's positive. Therefore, it comes as it is. And remaining whatever is inside in the norm is AZ. And that is precisely what we want to show. Therefore, it's a very easy proof, but very useful expression for the subordinate matrix norm. So we always keep this expression in mind and wherever it is handy, we should be able to use this instead of the expression given in the definition. Let us now state the important properties of the subordinate norms which are useful to us. The first property is norm AX is less than or equal to norm A into norm X, which is true for all X in Rn. Generally, we don't use different notations for matrix norms and vector norms. We have to understand them in the context of where they are applied. For instance, in this term, it is a vector norm and this represents matrix norm and similarly, this represents the vector norm. So since it is clear from their argument, we generally don't use separate notations for them. Okay, so let us see how to prove this inequality. First of all, you can observe that if x is equal to 0, then it is clear, right? Because ax is 0 and 0 vector, when applied to norm, it gives 0. Therefore, the left-hand side is 0. Similarly, if x is a 0 vector, this is again 0. Therefore, the right-hand side is also 0. So the inequality is, in fact, equality and it is trivially satisfied. So we take any x not equal to zero. In this case, the left-hand side norm ax can be written as norm ax divided by norm x into norm x, right? Now what you do is take supremum or maximum in this case over this first term, all x not equal to zero in the first part and write this is less than or equal to maximum of x not equal to zero norm ax by norm x into norm x. See, I'm taking maximum only over the first part. And keeping this second part, I'll leave it to you to check this. It's not very difficult. Let's go to the next property, which is rather very important. You are given two matrices, A and B. Both are N cross N matrices with real entries. Then norm A into B is less than or equal to norm A into norm B. Let us see how to prove this. Take any X in Rn, which is not a zero vector, and consider this term A into B into X, and take the norm of that. What norm it is? It is vector norm because A into B applied on X is a vector. Therefore, it's the vector norm. And due to the associativity of the matrix multiplication, we can write it as A into Bx. That is, you first find Bx, which will give you a vector, and then apply A on that vector, right? So now we are in a position to use the first property of the subordinate norm with A being A itself and X being Bx here. Then we can write it as, less than or equal to norm A into norm Bx, right? Where 
the first one is the matrix norm and the second one is the vector norm again apply the first property with now a being b here and x being x itself we can write it as less than or equal to norm a into norm b into x norm x right now you divide both sides by norm x that gives us norm a b x divided by norm x is less than or equal to norm a into norm b right now this is true for all x in rn which are non zero vectors right now you take maximum over all such non zero vectors the same inequality will also be true for this because this inequality is true for all x therefore for that x for which the maximum is attained on the left hand side for that x also this inequality will be true therefore you can say that maximum of all non zero vectors norm a b x divided by norm x will also be less than or equal to norm a into norm b and that is precisely what we want to show here because this is nothing but you are subordinate norm definition applied to the matrix a into b right so therefore that is precisely what we want to show here we'll now list the subordinate matrix norm for some of the vector norms that we have given as examples previously before going into that let us summarize what we did so far we have defined what is called subordinate matrix norms these are the matrix norms subordinate to a given vector norm that is you give me a vector norm we can generate a matrix norm from here by first collecting all the numbers a x this is applied to the vector norm such that norm x is equal to 1 and then take the supremum that you define as the norm of a and you can show that this defines a matrix norm and this is called the matrix norm subordinate to the given vector norm that is this norm so you give me a vector norm i can give you a subordinate matrix norm corresponding to that vector norm and we have also shown that this can be equivalently written as maximum over all z not equal to 0 that is non zero vectors az divided by norm z since all are non zero numbers this will be strictly greater than zero that is why we are dividing by this so why we are in particular interested in this subordinate matrix norm because this subordinate matrix norms enjoy certain properties like norm of a x is less than or equal to norm a into norm x and also norm a b is less than or equal to norm a into norm b not all matrix norms will satisfy this condition you can take some examples of matrix norms that doesn't satisfy this condition but if your matrix norm is a subordinate matrix norm to some ve vector norm then surely it will satisfy this condition that's what we have shown and also if you apply that subordinate matrix norm to identity matrix it gives you one that looks very intuitive now the question is if i give you a vector norm 
can I generate explicitly the subordinate norm associated with that? Well, if you go by definition, it looks a bit non-trivial because you have to take the supremum over this huge set, which is, if you, even if you put it in this form, this also looks a huge set. However, we know the explicit formulas for subordinate norms of certain important vector norms. Let us take them as theorems now, and we will omit the proof of all these theorems. The first one is the L infinity norm. Remember, when we defined vector norms, we have given three norms as example and told that we will be using these vector norms in our calculation of any examples or anything in our course. One is the L infinity norm, which is also called the maximum norm. If you recall, its formula is given by this. Now, the question is if I give you this vector norm, then what will be its corresponding subordinate matrix norm? That is the question. Well, you can prove that the corresponding subordinate matrix norm is given by this formula. Well, for our course, we will omit the proof. However, this formula is very important. In some examples, we may involve L infinity norm and its subordinate matrix norm, in which case you have to use this formula. You have to be very careful what vector norm is given to you. You have to take the corresponding subordinate matrix norm. Therefore, you should know if L infinity norm is the vector norm given to you, then you have to choose this norm as the matrix norm in all your calculations later that whatever you do in any example or problem that we come across, you should correctly choose this. Otherwise, we will not give any weightage to the proof of this theorem. This norm is also called maximum row sum norm. It's more easy to remember it with this name. You can see that you are summing the elements of the row by taking their absolute values and then taking the maximum over all the rows. That is why this name is given. So if you are working with the maximum norm or L infinity norm, then you have to work with maximum row sum norm. Okay, so this somehow you have to remember. Of course, if, if you are given any matrix and ask you to find the maximum row sum norm, it's not very difficult. For instance, if you take this as your matrix A, then the first row, if you take the modulus and sum, it gives three, and the second row gives five. Finally, the third row gives four. And now you know what is A infinity. It's very easy, elementary to find this matrix norm. Therefore, if I give you L infinity norm as the vector norm and ask you to find the matrix norm's value of this matrix, which is a subordinate to L infinity norm, it's very easy, elementary to find. Next, let us pass on to the other norm that we have given as example, that is L1 norm. Its formula is given like this. Again, we will omit the proof and just take the formula for the subordinate norm, and that is given by this formula. And this is the maximum column sum norm. It means you take the columns now, take their absolute values, add them, and then take the maximum of all this. And that subordinate norm is generally denoted by norm suffix one. Okay, if I give you any problem where I mentioned that I want to use the L1 norm as the vector norm, and if that problem involves any matrix norm calculation, you have to automatically take this as the expression for that matrix now, okay? I will not mention it in the problem, but this theorem says the corresponding subordinate norm should be the maximum column sum norm that you should remember. Again, if you go back to this uh, example and you can easily calculate the ma maximum column sum norm for this matrix. Finally, we were also interested in one more norm, which we generally call as L2 norm which is the well-known Euclidean norm. 
and this is the most preferred one from the practical point of view because this gives us the physically realistic distance between two points in rn right because of that this norm is highly preferred in any analysis that we do and its formula is given by this now let us see what is the corresponding subordinate norm to this vector norm the subordinate norm is given by this formula that is the subordinate norm when applied on any matrix a is given by this how it is first you find a transpose a then find all its eigen values take modulus of them take the maximum of all that and then take the square root you can clearly see that when you are working with the euclidean norm well that is very much realistic but unfortunately its corresponding subordinate norm is not so easy to compute both manually as well as on a computer especially when the matrix a is a very large matrix like 100 by 100 matrix or 1000 by 1000 matrix it's not very easy to find the eigen values of the matrix a transpose a because of this although this norm is preferred but it's not computationally so easy therefore computationally it is not well preferred in the analysis rather if you take the other two norms that is l infinity norm and l1 norm you can see that their corresponding subordinate norms are elementary easy to compute both manually as well as by computer therefore in all the analysis generally people prefer either l infinity norm or l1 norm rather than l2 norm with the fact that all the norms are equivalent in the finite dimensional space if you have done a functional analysis course you would have proved this theorem all the norms in finite dimension space are in some sense equivalent let's not go into these details let's again give an example for computing the subordinate norm for l2 norm let's take this matrix and first you have to find the matrix a transpose a and then its eigenvalues the eigenvalues are approximately given by this now you take the modulus of all this of course they are in this case positive and then you have to take the maximum so the maximum will be achieved at lambda 3 and then you finally have to take the square root of that therefore this is the two norm of the matrix a 